You'll have to tell me if they can hear me. So here we are again, Facebook Live, uh, <coughs> slightly later than expected. Uh, we do like to experiment with new technology here at Facebook Towers. Uh, <coughs> it's what it's all about. And uh, unfortunately, we did a uh, test, test, test for the last two days on new software around streaming from a pro camera, and it didn't appear to work. So sorry about that. We're 15 minutes late, and we will get it working for next week. But who knows how we need to test that. So um, welcome here. And uh, if this is your first time here at Facebook Live uh, with David Shepard, uh, it is me. And at least you absolutely know that we are absolutely really live. And when we go live, things don't work out as they, uh, as they go, as they're planned. And what do you do? Carry on, act as if. So Facebook Live 14 was all about the fact that the problems that we experience in our life is as a result of our internal representations, not actually due to the external event. So the anger isn't out here, the sadness isn't out here, the fear isn't out here, the hurt isn't out here, the guilt isn't out here, the anxiety, the uncertainty isn't out here, it's in here. And you know, we've got a great example of that at the moment, again in the UK. Uh, we had Brexit last year, now we've had a last minute uh, election announced, you might want to look at one of my previous Facebook Lives about what happened during Brexit and during the, uh, the Trump uh, election to see if the same thing is happening again, which would be quite uh, fascinating. I'll be watching that very, very clearly. And let's talk about how it's possible actually to release negative emotions from events in the past as far as our experience is concerned using time-based techniques. So there's a couple of things I need to uh, share with you about the way that your unconscious mind works. And obviously I'm not gonna be showing you tonight how to release anger, sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt from, your, from the events in your past. I'm not gonna be showing you how to get rid of limiting decisions or anxiety for the future. What I'm gonna be showing you is how it's possible. What's the theory, the practice behind all of these particular things? So to be able to show you that, what we need to look at is some of the workings of your unconscious mind. So your unconscious mind stores all of your memories. And this was demonstrated by a neuroscientist in the 50s by the name of Penfold. Uh, actually demonstrated that within our unconscious mind, though he, to be fair, actually looked at how these were all stored within our brain, our neurology. Uh, was that our unconscious mind or our neurology stored all of our memories. And we could probably underline that as in all of our memories. And it also organizes our memories in two ways. Uh, one, our timeline, which I'm going to take you through in a moment. Some of you are already aware of that, though some of you may be noted that. And also the idea of a gestalt, which is a collection of memories around a particular topic or a particular subject. So you might have a collection of memories, which is all of your friends. It might be a collection of memories about all of the cars that you've ever had in your life. It might be a collection of memories about all the houses that you've lived in. So it organizes them in uh, collections of memories. So let's, let's, let's pick up this one here, timeline first. For those that are new to it, I know a lot, many of you know where your timeline is. But for those of you new, and there's a lot of new people watching this, and I'm really pleased to see you uh, as a result of our conversations on Facebook today. And uh, I've got a, a notion that uh, Adrian, nice to, meet, nice to see you, Adrian. Uh, good to see you. Uh, thanks for joining us on uh, our Facebook Live, Adrian Peck, that is. Um, I have an idea that if I was to ask you in which direction, and this is your unconscious mind, not your conscious mind. If I was to ask you in which direction is your past and your future, you might say it's from left to right, it's from front to back, it's from up to down, or in some relationship to your body. And it's not your conscious mind's idea about where your past and your future is, it's your unconscious. So the thing with this is to go with the very first answer, 
that pops into your mind. Hi, James. Nice to see you, James. Um, then the answer is, you know, the first thing that pops into your mind. So if I was to ask you, where is your past and where is your future? Well, let me just slow that down a little bit. If I was to ask you, your unconscious mind, where's the past, which direction would you point? There you go. And if I was to ask you, which direction is your future, where would you point? There you go. So you'll notice that the directions you pointed in for the past or the future suggest a line, a continuum that goes from your past to your future, distant past to the future, through this moment in time we call now. That is your timeline. It really is as simple as that. So park that thought for a second because we're gonna come back to that idea in a moment. Now, other things about your unconscious mind. Your unconscious mind is the storehouse of your emotions. If you're feeling something, if you're feeling angry, it's your unconscious mind that's feeling angry, not your conscious mind. If you're feeling happy, it's your unconscious mind that's feeling happy, not your conscious mind. If you're feeling sad, it's your unconscious mind that's feeling sad. If you're feeling excited, it's your unconscious mind. So your conscious mind really is the observer of your emotions, which is why if we want to work around our emotional freedom, if we want to work around our emotional balance, if we want to work around our emotional choice in life, then we need to work with our unconscious mind and techniques that are specifically work with the unconscious mind. So, next one. Our unconscious mind represses memories with negative emotions. You'll notice some of my uh, abbreviations coming out here. That's a medical abbreviation. That's electronics abbreviation. So there we go. That's interesting. What does that actually mean in reality? What, what it means in reality? And, you know, these come from the prime director of the unconscious mind, which aren't really from NLP. They're not from timeline therapy. They're not even from hypnosis. Actually, they come from a Hawaiian Huna. And the ancient Hawaiian said that what our unconscious mind did with a, a, a memory with negative emotions on it, and let's just explain that. So a memory with unresolved negative emotions is a memory that maybe from so many years ago, or when we think about it now, still has us feel angry or sad or afraid or hurt or guilty. And what our unconscious mind does is it takes that memory, puts it into a black bag, and draws the drawstring shut on the black bag. The memory's still there. The emotion is still there. And yet it's in the black bag. So it's not playing on our mind all of the time. But then if you're anything like me, what you experience is that every now and again, your unconscious mind brings up these memories. And it brings them into your consciousness. You know, the two of the big things for me was my dad dying and also my marriage ending in divorce. Uh, Joe from Master Coach. Hi, Joe. Good to see you. Uh, and nice to work with you last week on the uh, Master Coach um, webinar. And what our, what our unconscious mind does from time to time is it would do this to me. You go like, David, do you want to think about your dad dying now? And of course... The answer to that question was, no, I don't. And you draw the drawstring shut. Or it would go like, do you want to think about your divorce now? And, of course, the answer was no. So I'd push it back in the bag. And I think a lot of people experience that. And I thought that was what life was about, was about learning how to deal with and keep the black bags shut. It wasn't until 1993 when I learned uh, time-based techniques in NLP that I realized there was another choice with that. There was a way of opening up these black bags and just emptying them out. So they no longer troubled me. The memories were resolved to the point where I can, I can think about my dad now and think about very loving memories. I can think about my, my marriage, you know, in, in, the, in the late 80s 
and be totally okay with that. Um, Maria, hi, sweetheart. <laughs> nice that you're, you're here with me. Um, and, you know, it was the, the fact that I got the choice about that was such a massive thing for me. So how is all of that possible? Because it seems quite remarkable, quite miraculous. And I thought the same thing as you. But there's a number of things that we need to think about that make this possible. And the thing around it is, it is so possible, it's so easy, that in actual fact, all of us have done it before. That is the most amazing thing. We just haven't realized how it worked and how we can do it in a structured and organized way. So we talked about these memories here, anger, and sadness, and fear, and hurt, and guilt for events in the past. And I think we've all had experiences in the past where we've experienced these. And we've all had experiences in the past where we've held on to these. We've not let these emotions go. So they've changed the way that we respond to things in the future. Maybe, you know, you've had an experience where afterwards you went, why did I get so angry about that? It was just dot, dot, dot. Or you went into a new relationship and you had the sadness from previous relationships. You had the hurt from previous relationships. You had the guilt from previous relationships. And you brought that into this one. It's like what one of my students calls the luggage of life. And you kind of like move into your new home and there's this, all this luggage around. I've done that. And it's possible to release all of these because each of these emotions here require the passage of time to exist. Let me ask you a question. Think of an event in the past where a specific event made you angry. Now think, where was the anger for that event 15 minutes before that event started? And I'm talking about the anger just for that specific, specific event. It didn't exist, did it? Think of an event in the past, specific event, where something happened and it made you feel scared? Where was the fear for that event 15 minutes before that event started? Didn't exist. So you might have thought of that uh, or heard that saying, if we could turn back time. Well, in our mind, we can. And uh, Cher had it as a number one song. We can turn back time. Have you also heard this particular saying? Maybe you've said it yourself. If I'd known then what I know now, I wouldn't have dot, dot, dot in the first place. Of course, all of us have. And we can use these universal ways that our unconscious mind works to be able to let go of all of these from the past. So here's how we can do that from a technical point of view. So we have our timeline. And we've got events in the past that have made us feel angry, or that made us feel sad, or that made us feel afraid, or that made us feel guilty. Now, because of the way that the unconscious mind organizes our memories and stores our memories, there has to be a particular memory which really is quite, well, it's not, I was going to say quite magical. It is magical in a way, but it's quite, you know, a natural thing is this thing here. We call it the first event. The first time you ever felt angry, the first time you ever felt afraid, the first time you ever sad, the first time you ever felt hurt, the first time you ever felt guilty. Now, if you think about it, where was anger in your world, in your universe, 15 minutes before the first time you ever felt it? 
That's right. It didn't exist, did it? Where was sadness in your universe, in your world, 15 minutes before the first time you ever felt it? It wasn't there. So if we were able to work with your unconscious mind to find that first event, and we were to go to, let's say for arbitrary purposes, 15 minutes before that first event, and though before we went there, we learned all the things that if we'd known them at the time, we wouldn't have been angry or sad or afraid or hurt or guilty in the first place, then we wouldn't have felt it. These are called the learnings. Imagine going to 15 minutes before the first time you ever felt angry, but knowing exactly what you'd need to know so you weren't angry in the first place. Or the same with sadness, or the same with fear, or the same with hurt, or the same with guilt. Now you might notice that this looks a little bit like a string of pearls. Now if you were to take a string of pearls and pull the string out, what would happen to all the pearls? They'd all drop off. And that's exactly what we do with timeline therapy techniques, what we do with mental emotional release techniques, is we assist the person in doing that. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, but what's the first event? That all makes sense, David. And what's the first event? Do I know what the first event is? Probably not consciously. And you have to unconsciously. Your unconscious mind has to know what the first event was. For one reason and one reason only. It's your unconscious mind's job to know what the first event was. For a couple of reasons. It stores your memories and it organizes your memories. It organizes your memories in a timeline, as you already know, and it organizes your memories in a gestalt, as you already know. So there has to be a first time and your unconscious mind must know when it was. It's a little bit more theory and I'm gonna pile a lot of theory on you tonight. And it's the only way that I can actually explain how all of this is possible is that where would the first event be? So here's our timeline again. And we allow for the first event to be in a number of places. Firstly, we would look for it being in the first seven years of our life. What Morris Massey would call the imprint period. When literally the emotions around us are imprinted upon our unconscious mind. I think we've all known kids in their first seven years. Uh, I know we've all been kids in our first seven years. And we certainly experienced all of those range of negative emotions in those seven years. So we're looking for an event early in this. because It's really important that we find the first one. So that we can take out the negative emotion from the root. From the cause. We also allow for the memory to be in the womb. I think we're becoming increasingly aware that, more, that uh, babies are more and more aware of what's going on in the mother's womb and what, what's going on for the mother around from an emotional point of view. So the first event could be there too. We're also looking for it being in a genealogical timeline which has been passed down to us. Now that could be as a result of imprinting, as in, you know, here's an example. Let's say that somebody was brought up with, well, all the people in the so-and-so, all the men in the so-and-so family are angry men. All the men in the so-and-so family are scared, fearful men. And it lives out as a family tradition. Though what we're becoming aware of is more and more ideas about the fact that we have cellular memory and also the fact that our past traumas or our ancestors' past traumas might actually be imprinted upon our DNA 
as a means of evolution. Maybe that's how this works. And maybe, you know, timeline therapy and emotional, uh, uh, mental emotional release techniques actually change our DNA encoding. These are things that we're starting to look at these days. And also, could it have come from a past life? There are traditions, there are religions around the planet that don't have past life as being an idea, a notion. They are a fact. The Hindu religion, the Buddhist religion, for instance, have that we have lived many lives. And we bring our lessons in some traditions, our karma, from those lives into this life. For us to learn, not from a punishment point of view, which is a misunderstanding um, around a lot of people for karma, but just from a learning point of view. When we've learned what we need to learn from what we bring in from a past life, the karma is released. So we allow for all of these things. Now, it doesn't matter whether you as the client believe in genealogical timelines, cellular DNA encoding. It doesn't matter whether you believe that you've brought this in from a past life or, in fact, that it came from the womb. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what does your unconscious mind give you as being the first event, the root cause of all of this? And if we were able to revisit that first event and have your unconscious mind you know, learn from that event. This is, goes back to what I talked about in Facebook 14. If I bring up the, uh, the flip chart again for that, which is here somewhere. Yeah, this one. The first event is just an internal representation. It's not real. It's where your unconscious mind said this whole thing started. And let's say that my unconscious mind said that the first event for me around anger was when I was seven. And my unconscious mind enables me to recover that memory. I'm not going back to that internal representation of that memory as a seven-year-old. I am going back as a 40 40 something there's me going into age distortion into a 54 year old memory yeah which enables me to come back with that with very very Llewellyn Davis good to see you guy how you doing I see you doing fantastic on Facebook really proud of uh, the results that you're uh, getting with your with your clients keep going man keep going um and I can reframe that memory I can change the way it makes me feel. I can change the way it makes me behave and therefore change the result that I get. This is how time-based techniques that we use in Fix My Mind, that we we use in our seminar, upcoming seminar, uh, Fix Your Mind, that we teach people in our practitioner and master practitioner training can enable people to regain emotional freedom in their life. And the, the reason why I teach this is because I experienced that in 1993, which is like, what was that, 24 years ago? I experienced that. I couldn't believe it. I honestly could not believe how quickly my phobia of bees and wasps disappeared. I couldn't believe how quickly my negative emotions around my dad dying and and, uh, my marriage ending in divorce disappeared. Uh, It was such a release for me. Uh, And that was when I decided that it was something that I was going to dedicate the rest of my life to teach people how to do, and which is why I'm doing this for you guys on Facebook Live right now. Let's just think about this from a belief point of view, because I don't know how long I've been uh, uh, going now. I'm, we're probably already uh, up for our 30 minutes, even though we started late. Let's think about this from a belief point of view. Well, if beliefs, and there's a a previous Facebook Live where I talked about beliefs, if beliefs were real, we'd all have the same beliefs, whether it be positive beliefs or negative beliefs. We'd all have the same religious beliefs. We'd all have the same beliefs about ourselves, you know, about money, about relationships, about who we are, 
but we don't. So beliefs are not real. They are internal representations. Hi, Mark. Um, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. So, therefore, with beliefs, we must have made a decision, either consciously or unconsciously, that a particular belief was true for us. Not for everybody else, but just for us. Imagine if you were, here's our timeline again, this is the magic of this. This is the absolute, you know, when I was a kid, I loved Doctor Who. I loved Time Slip. That's showing my age now. It's a 1970s program. I loved these time things, time tunnel, uh, where we went into the past. And we were able to go into the past and change things for the future. Well, we can do that. Imagine if you were, to, you were able to find an event in your past where you decided that you weren't good enough. And maybe it was when you were five as a result of something you experienced when you were at school. Just imagine that. And imagine going back to that time and learning from that time, revisiting the five-year-old you. For me, as the 54-year-old you, the things that had you decide that you weren't good enough then are just not valid anymore. And what happens is your unconscious mind unlocks it from time. This is what Alfred Korzybski was talking about. This is why they called him the time binder. We time bind memories. We have an experience when we're five. And if we don't know how to change it, we could keep that memory with the same meaning it had when we were five for the rest of our lives, unless we learn to use time-based te time techniques like timeline therapy and mental emotional release. And we can go back to that memory. We can unlock that memory. We can have that limiting decision disappear, and therefore the belief disappears forever. Imagine that. This is magic. This is what I experienced in 1993. And, you know, I love um, um, that saying about magic being that um, Arthur C. Clarke, I think it was, said that magic is just any sufficiently advanced technology that most people don't understand. Most people don't understand this. Now you do. But the majority of people would think this was magic. And even though I've been experiencing this and taking people through it, thousands of people through it for the last 24 years, even though now I understand it, when I see it work, when I see it happens, it's still magic. The result is still magic. So one final thing to leave you with, because there's one emotion that we haven't yet mentioned, which is that one. And I don't know if James is still watching uh, and also my other fixers in Fix My Mind, Vish and Regina and Mark. Uh, this is big on the radar at this particular point in time. Uh, from a lot of people I'm talking to, there's a lot of that. Because, you know, you only need to read the news. There's lots of uncertainty out there. There's lots of financial uncertainty. There's lots of uncertainty around our personal safety. There's lots of uncertainty around the way the world's going to go and what's going to happen uh, with the election here in the UK, with the resort, the, you know, the, everything's going on between the USA and North Korea and Russia and all of those kind of things. That's all out here. You can't change that. And what you can change is this and the way it makes you feel. I can tell you now, if you're feeling anxious about that, if you're feeling the fear of uncertainty around that, you won't be making the best of your life, even though you have no fit, power to change this actual thing. So how can we enable somebody to let go of anxiety? How can we enable somebody to let go of the fear of the future, I guess, from a... 
uh, way of describing it. Again, the magic of time. There is only one way for you to feel anxious about the future. And that is imagining something happening in the future going the way you don't want it to happen. Now, since there's a saying, we tend to get what we focus on, why would you want to imagine that in the first place? Does the anxiety actually enable you to create it differently? No, what it does is even if it goes well, it just means that you feel bad until it goes well. Even if it doesn't go well, it just means you felt bad before it didn't go well. <laughs> so anxiety is a bit of a redundant emotion if you think about it. So let's say there's this event out here about which you think you were anxious. And you were to go over your timeline to 15 minutes after the event about which you thought you were anxious. And then look back to now, having imagined it going totally the way you wanted to go. Now would be the, where would be the anxiety? That's right, would disappear. Now, are there certain things out in the future we have no control over? Yeah, there are. There are things out in our future. But what's the point in getting anxious about them? We can't change them anyway. In fact, going into them, feeling totally calm, balanced and centred, would more than likely enable us to make the best out of those events anyway. Are there events out in the future which in actual fact we're anxious about and we could change them? if we were just to feel totally calm, balanced, and centered. So this is a secret. Release the anger, the sadness, the fear, the hurt, and the guilt. From our past. Get rid of limiting beliefs about I'm not good enough, I can't control my destiny, I can't create the future that I want. But also, using these techniques, imagine our future just the way we want it to be. Does that mean it will be? No, it doesn't. Does it dramatically increase our probability of it being that way? Yes, it does. Does it enable us to be in the moment of now in the way that enables us to experience now in the most positive and the most empowering way? Yes, it does. So thank you for joining me with our slightly late Facebook Live. I'm aware that I've... Uh, dumped a lot of information, a lot of concepts on you there. Um, it would probably help if you didn't watch Facebook Live 14 for you to watch that because that's a really important piece as to what makes all of these things possible. And all I've done is I've taken you through the theory of this. The practice goes way beyond what I could share with you online over 14 minutes over, or 30 minutes even. Uh, what I wanted, though, was to take you through the theory so that you would realize that what I'm talking about, uh, what I'm talking about, the possibility with NLP, and with hypnosis and timeline therapy and the HUNA techniques and mental emotional release techniques, is possible. You can actually completely and totally change your emotional response to the moment and your beliefs about the world, other people, and yourself, which can and will enable you to create your future completely differently. Thanks for uh, joining me this evening. It's been fun. Uh, and we'll see you next week, 1900 GMT, right here on David Shepard's Facebook Live. 
If you want me to cover a particular topic, then please do PM me uh, because I only think about the topic that I'm going to cover probably around about the day before. So if you've got a particular topic you want to cover, then please do. Until then, have a great day if you're out in Australia uh, or actually, uh, yeah, morning if you're out in Australia, a great day or evening if you're in Europe, great evening here in the UK, great day in the East Coast, morning in California and early morning if you're in Hawaii. See you again.